What's next for IT? In today's economy, technology touches every aspect of the day-to-day -day operations of business. There has never been more pressure on IT to deliver for our organizations. So what can we expect over the next decade? We need to think differently about how we approach our work to continue to thrive into the future. This requires all of us to be intentional in how we look at our role going forward. Smart IT is an approach to getting the important things done by transforming the way we think, work, and lead. And now, let's disrupt the status quo, simplify the complex, and reduce risk the smart IT way. Smart IT, where IT comes to explore what's next. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about a new construct I've come up with to help facilitations of those inside of IT and those outside. So Smart IT is an approach to getting the important things done. So I've created this model and framework to help structure thinking as we contemplate what's next for us as a profession, as a group, as a function inside of all our businesses. So one of the ways we facilitated this discussions of the Smart IT concept is through the Smart IT podcast. This is where I brought on guests, both inside and outside of IT, to get their perspectives on what they're seeing coming down the line for what IT is gonna to need to be able to do, both professionally and as a team itself. Now I'm currently working on the book for Smart IT, a way to actually capture all the ideals, the concepts, the perspectives I've developed over the last couple of years to really hone in on what Smart IT is and really to share that with the larger community. So that's coming this fall of 2024. So I'm pretty excited about that. So now I wanted to, to come up with a way to actually facilitate more conversations, right? So there are a lot of different roles and responsibilities inside of IT, a lot of different personas, people doing a lot of different things on the front end and back end of IT. In addition to all the external resources and thought leaders and people providing value inside the marketplace that IT interacts with every day. So I wanted a way to make it easier for people to come together and have conversations uh, about these important topics. So I built a construct to help facilitate this conversation in a way that you don't necessarily have to use your own organization's um, information or people, but have a different way to abstract that, but really get into the details of how you operationalize really the meaning behind smart IT. So we've probably all been familiar with ACME incorporated in IT, you know, a way of kind of constructing different networks or models for directory services in the past. So uh, we're going to use something similar here. So we want to bracket the conversation in a way that makes it easier for everybody to participate. So I've um, called out to my friend, Catherine. She's written a book called Deciphering Intentions. It's a fictional story. It's a thriller. It has lots of concepts for IT and cybersecurity touching on everything from smart devices to privacy, ethics, um, artificial intelligence. So a lot of very good, interesting, and topical um, things that IT is dealing with today. And it's a great way to frame this discussion going forward here for Smart IT as well. So it allow us to talk to both technical and non-technical audiences, get everybody on the same page, and allow us to have a discussion and be able to do comparisons and contrasts of some of the topics that we're going to be um, bringing forth here as we, we proceed, obviously, with the podcast and uh, as the book gets closer to being published. So there's a character in the book. His name is Tom. Uh, he has a company in there, very high tech company dealing with artificial intelligence. So we're going to go here and use his Tom company as a as a way to construct conversations here. So we're going to be talking a lot about Hathigan Incorporated. So that's going to allow us to deal with an organizational structure in the C-suite here, with all the main players here that deal with building digital infrastructure and enabling that for our businesses. So one of the, uh, another key concepts here we're going to be talking about a lot is the business model canvas from Alexander. 
recommend this for people in the IT to take a look at what he's done around that. He has a book. He has a company. He does a lot of good work around the globe, helping uh, companies and innovators look at their current existing business models and, and find different ways to explore innovation. So I found this a very good way for CIOs and other IT leaders to look at their uh, business model and to kind of match what their organizations are doing across the board. So we're going to be exploring enterprise architecture, right? This is that interface between what the business needs to support its business model. And then what's all, all underneath the infrastructure that's running and driving the business, what's powering that business model. Then we're going to be also looking at the IT operating model. This is how IT structure itself. How does it finance this technology and staffing? Uh, how is it structured? How is it governed? How does it team together? How does it work across, across uh, different silos? How does it integrate these different technologies and capabilities? So that IT operating model is the way we take the enterprise architecture and make it come to life. And then we also take a look at the, the role that CISO, right? That focus on that cyber risk management, having a good view into what the CIO is doing uh, in the infrastructure, how the architecture and the technology, ways to actually develop smart strategies and operationalize uh, risk management, uh, management at scale. And then chief risk officer, obviously people see CRO, some organizations after chief revenue officer, in this case, there's also a chief risk officer role as well. So we're going to be uh, looking at that from an enterprise risk management standpoint and see how the cybersecurity programs integrate uh, with ERM at a higher scale. What are the communications back and forth? What are the uh, capabilities that can be shared in the functions? So a lot of exploration around uh, enterprise risk management. Then we're going to take a look here really really explore here. We started to look at the business model and really start to explore the, the reason for the organization to exist, right? And we're gonna look at that business marketplace. But also we're gonna have a subsection of that business marketplace, which is the technology ecosystem that CIOs and their teams look at to actually buy technology, consume that technology, right? So in this context, the CIO is a buyer of tech and it does interactions constantly with system integrators and consultants and vendors and technology partners, just a very large ecosystem of providers inside the larger market space. And they're doing that to really kind of correspond, if you look at the left-hand side of the business model canvas, to do the key activities and resources here. And that all comes at a cost, right? And all of this is in, in support of the business itself, right? So all the technology that the IT team uh, buys consumes, all the services they use, all the resources they use. It's in constant communication with this marketplace to actually get what it needs to support this side of the business. And then when you go to the right-hand side, we'll be talking about the interactions with the innovation that the business itself is doing, knowing some different people with different roles inside of organizations, talking about innovation that's driving that, how it's changing the products, the services, the experience that it's bringing out to the marketplace. And then we'll be exploring the relationship between CIOs and CMOs, right? So at the end of the day, chief marketing officer is that front end for that go-to-market strategy as he gets ready to interface back to the business marketplace to sell his services, products, and experiences. And then we talk about sales, right? How that, what that buying experience looks like. So these kind of correspond to the right-hand side, talking about the different customer segments, the different channels that the, uh, organization does as a producer to sell into the marketplace. So I find it very fascinating if you had like a CIO and a CMO sitting down and kind of talking about, you know, what do we do to get ready for the market? And the other way is how do we uh, pre present ourselves back to the marketplace to sell uh, our value? So very interesting dynamics here. So this constructs allow us to have these different conversations with these different uh, different people on the org structure and have those conversations in a way that makes sense. And then obviously, CMOs, sales are really concerned about these existing customers and then the uh, prospects that they're engaged with on a day-to-day -day basis. So come join this conversation uh, on Smart IT, right? So we open up more and more blogs, podcasts, different uh, places to meet, talk to each other, share, collaborate, 
obviously culminating in the book here to help, help, help facilitate even more conversations. So what we're going to drive forward here is kind of a starting point. So I, I recommend everybody pick up Catherine's book, Deciphering Intentions. It's a 30 minute read, very uh, engaging. It's a thrilling story. Uh, you can give it to your friends, your family to read. They'll understand uh, the main themes of the storyline. What's interesting about the underlying themes is we can map that uh, to the work we do here in IT. So we'll delve into the details. So if you're talking to somebody who's non-technical, they'll understand the story of time and the story that, that's being told in the cycle intention stories. But the fact that IT is we we make these things possible and make the things in the story actually a uh, reality. So recommend go read the, uh, the cycle intentions. Come out and engage me. Ping me on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to be a guest on a podcast, love to have you on there and chat with you. I'm going to provide input to the book. I'm open to uh, uh, dialogue and talk to people to get new ideas, get feedback on what's going on. Uh, but just look at this construct here for Smart IT just to help facilitate these conversations. And like I said, um, really excited about this workspace construct, uh, excited about what's uh, what's coming up and a great way to talk to uh, you guys out there. So come explore what's next with me with Smart IT. Until the next episode, take care. Thanks for joining another episode of the Smart IT Podcast, where we explore what's next for IT and disrupt the status quo, simplify the complex, and reduce risk together. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and leave your comments. And for more Smart IT wisdom, check out my website at williamreed.info.